Right, okay guys, this is the Riley Pathfinder interior that we are restoring for Practical Classics magazine. As you know, for those that have followed the series through, this is the front bench seat. We will be doing the back seat next, and it's not gonna be quite as near as of an intensive video session, because um, obviously it's gonna be basically repeating the same old things again um, over and over. So we will sort of do like um, a short video of that explaining what we're gonna do on that seat when we get round to it that's a little bit different to what we did on this one. So um, you're gonna sort of see stages of that where we're gonna explain it at the beginning, part way through, and then at the end as three sort of very short, quick videos just to show you that seat. So with this one, we are now completely fully finished apart from the final stage, which is the lacquer stage. You can see that we've got the armrest here done. Um, as you can see, that just, obviously we've not got it fitted back in yet, but that would just simply fit in there like that. That is your armrest and it looks absolutely beautiful. So it's coming along together very, very nicely. So we're not gonna lacquer this part today. We're gonna lacquer all the outsides of the upper base. So we've obviously already prepared everything. As you can see, we have put the paper in place, obviously, because again, like on the painting video, what we don't want is blowback of the lacquer landing on here and feeling dry um, and unnatural that's just going to create more sanding which we don't want to do so we're going to spray the lacquer on this back here today and we're going to show you how to do that we're going to do probably three or four coats we're going to show you what we're doing in between each coat so it's going to be a bit of a long video because we're going to have to dry with the hair dryer as we're going because i'm going to spray the whole back and then we're going to dry with the hair dryer as we're going then we're going to sand re you know recoat with lacquer again dry sand and then recoat with lacquer again and then dry sand and then recoat a fi final time but that time we're gonna dry and then sand with a totally different paper. So here we have all the tools that we're gonna need. Um, we obviously have our mixing pot that we're gonna put the lacquer into in the filter because we are gonna filter the lacquer itself just to make sure that there's no dry bits landing in the pot because you can get that when you, if you sort of open up the top, you're gonna get lacquer that sort of forms around the edges here and all in here and around here, you can sort of see this is like little dry bits all the way around it. These bits can fall off and sort of land in your mix if you're not filtering. So just bear that in mind when you're using the lacquer. We've got two lots of paper. We've got a 1200 paper and this one is a 3000. So you've got 1200 and 3000. This one we call polishing paper, obviously good old hairdryer um, to, to dry the lacquer over. Right, so the clear coat sealer lacquer, whatever you wish to call it, um, finish, protector, so many different names, but it is a lacquer. That's what the industry should call it, is a lacquer, and we're trying to standardise the industry to get it called a lacquer finish, which is what it is. It's a leather lacquer finish. So that is done with the mix that we've got is 70% satin and 30% matte. The reason why we've done that is the majority of car seats and older car seats um, in particular, they're not quite a satin the matte is too flat and obviously gloss is too shiny because that's not how they are. So we've mixed 70%. So this is a one litre. So 700 mil of satin, 300 mil of matte. Mix the two together, just giving them a real good sort of shake up. You can sort of get, because the matte's heavier than the satin or the gloss, you can sometimes get like a little bit of the matte dropping to the base and falling in here obviously because matte's made with like a sort of proprietary product with like a basically matting agent powder sort of thing um so when you make the sort of matte finish so it has like a heavier product in it that will sink to the base so you have to just give the, we, we've got a ball bearing in there as you can hear yep well ball bearing it's a couple of marbles so we put marbles in the bottom and which is what we do with our paints as well as our lacquer just give that a little bit of a shake up if it's been sat for some time might take you a few minutes just to shake it up to remove everything from the base. As you can see, you know, th th this is pretty good anyway because we use it quite regular. Um, so just give it a little bit of a light shake. And as I say, it's a 70-30 mix. And we are going to just pour some of the lacquer in through the filter. So again, we're just going to filter in. And that is just to make sure that we're not getting any bits landing in there that we don't want landing in there. And as you can clearly see, I'm putting quite a fair bit in there. We don't really need all that amount because the amount of lacquer that you're going to use compared to paint is very, very minimal because it's extremely thin coats going on. Obviously, the lacquer is very, very different to the paint. The paint is quite a thick um, product. So the viscosity is a lot thicker, a lot heavier on the paint compared to the lacquer. The leather lacquer finish is like a water consistency. So just bear that in mind when you're spraying, you will need to get further away from the item that you're spraying 
and turn down things like the paint flow and the air flow as well while you're spraying. So just bear that in mind, just let that filter through. Obviously you don't want that to go on the seat, so just put that down on the side. And then the next stage is we are going to get some of the lacquer into the gun. It's on quite a lot of air at the moment, so we're going to adjust that and I'm going to show you what we're going to do to adjust that as well, just so that you can understand how we're going to adjust. So we're just getting the lacquer poured in now. I'll just see exactly how much we've got in there, so that I've got enough to do it several times. Nearly there, about a quarter of the way full at the moment. You can just see it rising there actually on the pot. If I go to about just over halfway, we'll have sufficient then. More than enough to do what we need to do at the top. So, in a moment we're going to obviously put the fans and things on, but before we do that, I'm going to just show you how to adjust the lacquer using this Devilvis SRI Pro Light S spray gun. So, as you can sort of see, if I sort of do it into the air, hopefully you'll be able to see all the misting. You can see that misting is far too much. So we've got a lot of pressure coming out. And so to adjust the pressure, we've got a valve on here. That is the actual pressure of the gun if you don't have a valve. So we're just gonna move that very, very slightly and you'll hear the difference straight away. You hear the difference there immediately and the amount of sort of dust pluming that you're getting out. So we've got it quoted at a point. This is your fan width. So we're gonna open the fan up so that you can see now that's a much wider fan. This is the actual paint flow. So we're gonna turn the paint flow down and shut some of that flow off. So we're gonna shut some of the lack of flow off. Now you can see we've nearly shut it off completely now, look. So we'll just wait for that to finish and I'll explain a bit further what we're doing. There's always one that's noisy when you're making a video. So this is the SRI Pro Light S, as you can see. So again, we've got very little flow coming out of material. So this is your actual material uh, flow dial here. So turn that back up. So we've gone one full turn and we'll see whether that needs to be adjusted or not. Um, so there you go, that, that's not too bad, but I think I need to turn down the pressure again a little bit, just about like so. That's about right, I would say. We're looking quite nice there, so that's, that's about where we want to be with it. And as you can sort of clearly see, we're getting a nice sort of even coating on there, as you can sort of see, it's, it's pretty good. So that, that's exactly where we need to be with it to get a nice sort of even coating on there. So we're going to get the um, fans turned on, and obviously they're going to make a little bit of noise. So just bear with me, and then we'll start spraying. As I said, we're going to put four coats on. We're going to apply, dry and sand, apply, dry and sand, apply, dry and sand. And then the fourth coat, we're obviously going to apply and dry and then sand with a different paper altogether with the 3000 rather than 1200, which is what we're doing in between each process. And when we sand, I'll explain exactly what we're doing. We're not sanding like we were before. We're just lightly dragging the paper over the surface. So I'll put my mask on. Um, I'll, if I have to talk, I'll take it off because it, it sounds quite um, rather Dalek-y with, with it on and you probably won't hear me anyway. So again, start from, it doesn't matter where you start from, top or bottom, it doesn't really particularly matter. It's not like car paint at all. It's a totally different process. It doesn't matter whether we go up and down, come side to side, you know, whatever we're doing, none of this matters. You're not going to see a difference on the surface at all. The main thing is, what you don't want is to get it too thick. I'll do you a quick demo um, to show you how good the products are. Um, if you happen to get it too thick and you spray on, and I'll show you this so you can learn from this mistake. So if you get it like this and you spray it on too thick and you've got it so that it's actually running like that, there's nothing to panic about, nothing to worry about. This is, happens all the time. And you just simply get a sponge 
and you just dab this away and just spread it around. You're not going to see any differences at all once this is dried. On the surface, there's going to be no difference whatsoever. And if it starts to run quite severely, I can do you another quick demo of it actually running so you can understand that side of it as well because it wasn't quite running there. And if we get it really thick, like this, again, just don't panic, don't worry about it. Everybody's thinking, my God, this must be terrible. This is very, very easy to deal with. Just grab the sponge, you're not gonna press hard, just grab the sponge and very, very lightly dab over the surface and spread the material around. It isn't gonna make any difference to the surface whatsoever. You are not gonna see a difference. You can do this also with paint before it's dry. Same with the lacquer, just deal with it now and, and get it over and done with. If you happen to get bits of dirt in the paint, deal with them after it's dry because you'll find the lacquer will sink and all the dirt will rise to the top and most likely when you rub over with your finger like so, if you rub over it like this, if this had lacquer on, you'd find by doing this and just going over with your nail, you'll get any little bits of dirt out of the surface very, very quickly. So this is not a problem whatsoever. This is quite normal. What we've shown you here is just a couple of little tips and tricks to how to get rid of those um, excesses that you've applied there if you happen to do it by mistake and forget to adjust your spray gun and just go and whap and spray it all on there. So I'll carry on and get spraying or else we'll be here for several hours. You're not spraying a very thick coating on, you're literally misting a coat on, so this is why we're doing several layers. Just excuse me a minute, please, if you can hear me, just excuse me. So as you can see here, where this was really thickly applied, We've deliberately not put any on here. We obviously put some on here originally and I went in different directions. This little bit, we've not put any on. I've done that for a specific reason. I wanna show you that you will not see a complete a difference here at all. You can sort of see here where it's quite thick, but once that's dry, there will be no difference at all in the actual surface finish. As you can clearly see, it's drying already. This is very, very quick drying product. And as you can see there, as you can see there clearly, there's absolutely no difference there where this real thick area was, there's actually no difference here whatsoever. This has had none, this has obviously had sprayed and there's absolutely no difference whatsoever. That's how good the products are. I'm going to carry on drying with this hand and I'm going to try to multitask and just blow a little bit of paint, a little bit of lacquer in here where we didn't have any because we just want to make sure we coat that. There we go.
takes a little bit of time to obviously dry it. We've got a big area here to dry. But once it's dry, you get this beautiful, nice matte finish on it. Uh, it's got a slight sheen to it. Nothing too matte, nothing too glossy. It just looks absolutely fantastic, so it's really good. nearly dry once we've got it dry we can do a little bit of sanding to show you how we do that um, and we'll sand the whole area and then obviously we'll repeat the process to show you right through the full stages the full four stage lacquer system to show, to show you how it's done So that's all that side of it done. So now we've got the 1200 sandpaper and we're not gonna press real hard like this to sand. We are literally just gonna very, very lightly drag this over the surface. If you get any of this misting, you know, sort of appearing like this here, don't panic about that because most of that will be covered once we spray and hidden over. So it's nothing to worry about whatsoever. So we're just gonna very, very lightly drag this over the surface that's all you're doing and all that is is just to denib the surface we're just going to very very lightly pull that over the surface like so the reason for doing this is just to give you a really nice beautiful smooth finish like brand new leather and that feels lovely and then obviously up and down your pleated areas, down the lines on, on the bottom here, pull it along the lines like so, across, it doesn't matter which way you're sanding again. I'm not gonna see any difference when you're sanding, so don't worry about that. So just lightly over the surface, you're not pressing or anything like that, you're just lightly going over the surface. And that feels good, feels nice. Beautiful. So we'll dry that, we'll blow that over with the hairdryer to remove any sort of like dust particles. And now we'll spray the next coat on. So we'll dry again now.
as you can see it's quite a quick drying product as well which really helps speed things up obviously if it's summertime they're going to dry very very quickly as well which is a really good bonus You can literally see it drying you know, in front of your eyes as we're going through. It's that quick at drying, it's really good, as you can see. And it, that feels beautiful now, it really is feeling lovely. If only you could touch the screen and fill this seat, you'd be amazed how much it, what it feels like. It's absolutely stunning. So there was a couple of little white bits there, which again, I've waited for it to dry. I've just gone over with my finger and they've gone. So this is all dry. So we've got a little bit of final drying at the top here. All this is dry, so it's beautiful. And this just feels absolutely stunning. It's absolutely beautiful, it really is. I don't know whether you can see that on the camera. There's a tiny little bit of something there. Just at the end of my finger now, you can probably go like that and it's gone. Look, this is why I'm saying wait until it's dry to get any little sort of imperfections out, you know, that's on the surface. So, again, we're going to lightly go over with 1200 and just very, very lightly go over the surface again with 1200. Very, very light. No need to go over as much as last time because this time, obviously, it's a lot smoother than what it was last time. So, just very, very lightly, very, very quickly over the surface. Just to make it feel absolutely ultra slick and smooth and beautiful like brand new leather but it really is feeling beautiful perhaps one day when technology moves on so fast you'll be able to almost put your hand through the screen and feel my leather seat and feel exactly what i'm feeling and why i'm so pleased with the results you can sort of get it as excited as i am because this is stunning considering what this was like originally a few months back it's absolutely unbelievable Sorry about that, had to get a swig of coffee. Right, so blow away again. On the inside here, you're probably wondering why I'm not really sanding this. Um, this is all vinyl on the inside here. Um, so when we painted, obviously the colour didn't come off because it was vinyl. I should have explained that maybe and maybe a lot earlier on in the videos. But all this here is vinyl. So we're, we're not too particularly bothered about those particular areas because one little light sand at the end with the 3000 and they will be absolutely fine. It's not like a high, you know, high wear area. It's not something where you're sitting or touching with your hands, um, you know, or, or with your legs on the seat sort of thing. So let's get the... I'll oh, take my mask off. Let's get the... Third coat put on now.
So that's your third coat put on. We're going to dry again, bear with us. We want to just show you the process through to see what's involved, so just bear with us while we're drying, please, guys. see there on the camera that's showing up sort of like some areas are heavier than others again once that's dry you will not see a single bit of difference whatsoever because the product is very forgiving it's very it's self leveling and it's absolutely fantastic and what this is doing now is obviously adding a, a good protection layer to the leather to make it probably last longer than what it did do originally the actual coating on the leather is what I should say last longer than originally because you're obviously putting a lacquer on there Obviously, once you've got a lacquer on it, you can't feed a lacquer. Um, you can protect it against UV rays and things, which is what people have this misconception about with leather. You, you need to protect, to, to put a protection cream on to protect against UV rays and dirt buildup. Because obviously, the more dirt you get on the surface and grease and grime, the more that's going to attract dust and particles of dirt on there that's maybe like sandy type materials, which will create an abrasive on the surface and that will then start abrading the leather away, the actual coating on the surface away, and that's why you end up with seats that are all worn with wear patches showing through where there's no colour on them. And that's because people don't think they should be protecting car seats, whether it's modern or old, with a protection cream. It is absolutely 100% imperative that you do so more with modern seats protecting with a protection cream than you do an old seat because modern seats are so flimsy with the coatings, they actually wear a lot quicker than what older car seats do, you know, with the coatings that they had on them. Because they were a lot better quality, they're a lot thicker coatings on them in those days. Obviously today, everything's waterborne, so we're putting on a waterborne system with a water-based lacquer. Um, so you need to ensure that you keep this system or any modern car seat, whether it's shoes, jackets, handbags, briefcases, sofas at home, Keep them protected with a protection cream because that will keep the leather soft and supple. It'll stop the UV rays or heat in your home drying out the leather. And it will keep the surface protected to stop it wearing a lot quicker than what it would do normally without that protection cream going on there. Things like ceramic coatings on leather are not advisable because they're a solid material and your leather needs to flex. Your leather needs to be able to flex. So with a ceramic coating on there, because of the nature of what a ceramic is, it seals absolutely everything up. Leather will have like a 1% breathability, even with the lacquer on. The, the ceramics completely seal that and actually create problems. So it will actually cause problems for the leather to actually dry out from the inside out, which isn't good, because it will make the surface coating dry a lot quicker and more, be more brittle. So just bear that in mind with your ceramics. Stick with a protection cream, it is far, far better it protects the surface from UV rays, which is what you've got to do with modern leather. So again, over with the 1200, very, very lightly, and this is really feeling absolutely beautiful. Once this is restored for Practical Classics, and it's back in this Rayleigh Pathfinder, I'm sure you're going to see it at car shows, um, at the NEC and things, or at least, I hope anyway. If you don't, you don't, but you'll feel how nice and beautiful this leather is then. And it just looks fantastic. I mean, considering how many holes and rips and tears and things that this had in it and how severe the cracking was we couldn't do this to the seat you know this is this is how flexible it's now come we couldn't do this to the seat originally this is brilliant it's, it's absolutely fantastic now beautiful and soft just can be used as you would do normally so blow away again and this is the final coat
as I say, it doesn't matter which way you're spraying, it's not gonna create any difference, as you can see here, I can, you know, can do whatever I want. It's not gonna lay any different, it's a very forgiving product. the last coating, that's four coats of lacquer it's had on there, that's got some really good protection on there now to protect against wear in the future, stains and dirt build up and everything else and once that's dry we can get the protection cream put on there which we'll do and show you how to do that in the next video. So we're going to just show you before we go about what you've got to do with this final coating now to sort of sand with the 3000 wet and dry paper. This is how quick it dries. It's very, very quick dry, and as you can see, I can rub this. Nothing's coming off. It's absolutely brilliant. Right, so that's the final stage. Now we've got to go over with the 3,000 wet and dry. Well, I say wet and dry, it's 3,000 paper. Don't obviously use it wet because you just sprayed it on. So 3,000 paper next. And again, just very, very lightly drag that over the surface. Anything like this, don't worry, because this will just wipe away. So don't worry about those particular little marks there at all. And all this is doing is just basically polishing the surface. Quite natural to see these little white, you know, this white sort of residue lines appearing, so don't worry about that. That'll just wipe away with a cloth. We're just literally going over the surface, bringing it over, giving it its final polish over the surface. Obviously, we keep the paper where it is, and then once we've finished, we'll pull the paper up and do what we did when we sprayed the base. Just lift the paper up to spray the um, bottom but that's feeling absolutely beautiful now it really is it's feeling lovely and we're not sort of putting any pressure on there we're just literally lightly dragging that over the surface just to make it feel nice and smooth and that feels beautiful so to remove the excess stuff like an ordinary um, terry towel, white terry towel, and just wipe that over the surface like so. And it's just gonna pull away any of the white residue powder where you just sanded. And leave it looking beautiful. Once the protection cream goes on there, any other marks left will be blended away. 
and that feels and looks absolutely fantastic and that's what we're going to do to the base as well so that is the video for practical classics that is the final stage for this Riley pathfinder for practical classics magazine as always guys thank you very much for your support please follow us subscribe to our channel head on over to practical classics subscribe to their channel all the details and all the products we've used will be in the video text below please look at it please read it it is there it's very useful information subscribe to practical classics subscribe to the magazine and we will see you at the nec tomorrow saturday and sunday thank you very much